The Brewers are set to take on the Chicago Cubs on opening day 2008. The Brewers are squaring off against last year's division champs, a year which the Brewers held the division lead for much of the year before fading down the stretch and settling for 83 wins. Things are looking up for a young Brewers team, featuring a young lineup that includes the home run champ Prince Fielder, Rookie of the Year Ryan Braun, JJ Hardy and Ricky Weeks up the middle, and all-star Corey Hart out and right. But there's one guy on the field who isn't young and promising, didn't hit 50 home runs or win a major award last year, but he's one who will outperform all of them throughout 2008. That man is the man on the mound, Ben Sheets. Sheets was so good in 2008, he was better than CC Sabathia, well, in some ways at least. Let's tell the story of Ben Sheets through the lens of one game from 2008. The first batter Sheets squares off against is infielder Ryan Terrio. The current matchup isn't one that jumps out at viewers, but it's one with significance. Terrio represents the best active player from Louisiana, with Sheets being the most talented arm from the state. Louisiana isn't known as being a hotbed of baseball talent, and for a while it seemed that Sheets was no exception. Sheets didn't begin pitching until he was a junior in high school and missed time due to shoulder tendonitis during his senior year. His entire high school included just 46 innings, but his stellar numbers and 90 mile an hour fastball earned him a half scholarship to the small D1 Northeast Louisiana State. Sheets was solid in his first two seasons of college baseball, tossing a combined 137 innings with an ERA just over four, but the trajectory of his career was altered the following summer. He thrived in the Cape Cod League, setting up a junior season when he set school records for both wins and strikeouts. Sheets breakout campaign led him to be selected 10th overall by the Brewers, a franchise that historically had struggled to produce high-level pitching. Terrio flies out and Sheets retires Soriano and Derek Lee for a 1-2-3 first. An Aramis Ramirez ground out brings up the Japanese phenom Kosuke Fukudome. Fukudome is making his highly anticipated major league debut today, one garnering international media attention. The Japanese phenom is coming off a six-year stretch where he posted an OPS over 900 each year. And while it's no longer Sheets who's the highly anticipated rookie, he garnered a similar amount of attention back in his initial season in 2001. Sheets made the opening day roster that year on the heels of a whirlwind season that included stops in Sydney for the Olympics and Atlanta for the Futures game and culminated in an off-season ranking as the fifth best prospect in all of baseball. With a struggling major league team and a new shiny $400 million ballpark set to open up, Ben Sheets was expected to be not just a good pitcher, but a franchise cornerstone. After two early season unspectacular starts, Sheets was optioned back to AAA. Manager Davey Lope said it was merely because they had no need for a fifth starter. He was supposed to be the guy, the hopes of a new era of Brewers baseball placed on his shoulders, being the rare prospect who had an international audience before even his arrival to the big leagues. And unlike Sheets, who sputtered out of the gates before gaining his footing in the majors, Fukudome doubles on the first pitch he sees in the big leagues. Sheets works around a two-out walk to set the Cubs down scoreless in the second. The third inning sees the Cubs send up Carlos Sembrano along with Terrio and Soriano. As Sheets settles in, he begins to display the dominance that his career has been marked with. This version of Sheets is one that we haven't seen with consistency since his career year in 2004, a year when he tossed 237 innings with a 2.7 ERA punching out a franchise record 264 batters in the process. Everything came together for one of the best young arms finally reaching his potential, yet for a team that won just 67 games. The highlight of Ben Sheets' 2004 season was his 18 strikeout performance against the Braves, widely recognized as the best pitching performance in Brewers history. In it, he allowed just three hits and one run, while efficiently tossing just 116 pitches, which might be the most impressive part of the whole outing. After that 04 season though, Sheet struggled to maintain his peak form. He averaged just 21 starts a year over the next three seasons, with an ERA of almost four. He seemed like a one-hit wonder, a prospect who turned out to not be the ace he could have been, but still a reasonably successful major leaguer. The first two Cubs go down in order in the fourth, but a two-out walk brings up Mark DeRosa. In the mid-2000s, with MLB set on globalizing the game of baseball, Commissioner Bud Selig announced the new World Baseball Classic Tournament. 
The tournament would run every three or four years, featuring the biggest baseball powerhouse countries. Though the inaugural WBC included the likes of Chipper Jones and Derek Jeter, perhaps no individual has been more important to Team USA than Mark DeRosa. DeRosa participated in the 2013 rendition as a player and is set to manage the team in the 23 tournament. But before the WBC, there was the good old-fashioned Olympics. From 84 to 08, the Olympics included baseball, with Cuba dominating the games. The 2000 Olympics in Sydney fell smack dab in the middle of their run. But the US went on an unlikely run to the finals to square off against their Cuban counterparts. On the bump for Tommy Lasorda's American squad in that gold medal game was Sheets. The Americans never relinquished the lead they took in the first, with Sheets going all nine, allowing just three hits while shutting out the Cubans. The CEO of Team USA later said they knew Sheets was the pitcher they could build the team around. Sheets later said he entered the start knowing it was the opportunity of a lifetime and delivered for himself, his country, and his teammates. It put Sheets on the map. The rookie catcher Giovanni Soto settles into the box to begin the fifth. Though it seems rather mundane for a decent veteran pitcher like Sheets to be facing a rookie catcher in Soto, it's nearly impossible to anticipate how the first half will go for each of the two. In the All-Star game at the soon-to-be-demolished Yankee Stadium, the National League will send out Sheets and Soto to comprise the battery to begin the game. Remember when I said Ben Sheets was better in 2008 than CeCe? Well, without CeCe in the second half, there's no chance the Brewers get over the hump to make it into the postseason. But without Ben Sheets in the first half, they might not even be in the race. 53 years have the Brewers been in existence, and just one time has the man on the mound to start the Midsummer Classic been a Brewer. Sheets' first half included a 2.85 ERA across 123 innings with 108 punchouts. He took the ball every five days, and he threw like an ace. It was a reappearance of the 04 version of Sheets. Though he slowed down a bit in the second half, he finished with 198 innings, allowing just 3.09 earned runs per nine. Yes, I know CC had a 1.65 ERA, but Sheets did throw 70 innings more. By no means am I trying to discount the work CC did, but I think it's time we give credit to Sheets for one of the best pitching seasons by a Brewer in recent memory. In large part, much of the rest of Sheets' outing is rather uneventful. The Cubs go down 1-2-3 in the 5th and 6th, and then the more modern managing of Ned Yost leads him to lift Sheets in the midst of a shutout with less than 100 pitches. This was likely done in part to protect Sheets, but also not to overwork him in light of his lengthy injury history. Some of the injuries he suffered from that landed him on the DL include bulging discs in his back, inner ear infections that sabotaged his balance, shoulder tendonitis, and two torn flexor tendons in his elbow. If Sheets could have stayed healthy, we could be talking about one of the best pitchers of the 21st century, one that even quite possibly could garner Hall of Fame consideration. Don't believe me? Well, about one-third of Sheets' career was spent on the DL. If Sheets pitched to the same level that he did throughout his career, he'd have been one of the 10 most valuable pitchers on this side of 2000. This is even ignoring the fact that it cut his career short and forced him to pitch through injuries, limiting his effectiveness. Though he's not often brought up as one of the best pitchers of the past two decades, a healthy Ben Sheets could have landed in Cooperstown. But unfortunately, we'll never know. The late innings feature what seems like peak 2008 Brewers. A week's hit by pitch, a Prince Fielder intentional walk, and RBIs from Ryan Braun and Corey Hart give the Brewers a 3-0 lead going into the bottom half of the ninth. But Eric Gagne promptly allows a three-run shot to Kosuke Fukudome. But all hope is not lost as the Brewers get their leadoff man Craig Council on with a double in the tenth. Jason Kendall lays down a successful sacrifice, leading to a Tony Gwynn RBI sack fly. It's fitting that this game ended with the Brewers scoring via a sack bunt and a sack fly. What many people don't realize about Sheets' 2008 season is he did just that. He sacrificed himself to try to win. Experiencing some elbow discomfort, trainers told Sheets there was a very high likelihood of his elbow blowing out, but he kept pitching. CC Sabathia put it on the line in late 2008 by throwing as much as he did, and he won. He got his big contract, had a great back half of his career, and seems destined for Cooperstown. What he did for the Brewers franchise should never be overlooked, and I'm glad it all worked out for him too. But unfortunately, when Sheets bet on his arm being able to handle the pennant race workload, his body gave out on him. In the penultimate start of the 2008 season, Sheets tore his flexor tendon requiring Tommy John surgery. Heading into free agency, CC got 7 years 161, while Ben Sheets sat unsigned until January of 2010. Leading up to the end of that year, the two had very similar levels of success. 
Though CC had thrown about 10% more innings, the two had nearly equal ERAs, and while Sheets boasted a better strikeout and walk rate. But after 2008, Sheets earned just 11 million, threw just 170 innings, and tore his flexor tendon a second time. Would it have been different had he prioritized his health over trying to bring the Brewers back to the promised land? Perhaps it would have been, but this too, we'll never know. It doesn't really matter whether Ben Sheets or CeCe Sabathia was better in 2008. The reality is the Brewers would have had no business playing in October without either. CeCe is rightfully celebrated for his half season in Milwaukee, where he dominated opponents, willingly pitched on short rest, and sacrificed his health and potential earnings to pitch in October. And so did Ben Sheets yet unfortunately with a different result. So I think it's time we celebrate Ben Sheets for leading the Brewers to the playoffs, putting his health on the line for his team and his city, and for his 2008 season that cemented himself as the greatest pitcher in franchise history. <laughs>